to a footballer who's making a special contribution to Britain's armed forces. Peter Leven, who plays for MK Dons, has already raised more than £2,000 for Help the Heroes. He's giving £5 for every goal scored by his team this season. And the home game against Yeovil on Saturday was designated Armed Forces Day. A Saturday, but with a difference. 20 past two, the players emerged as normal for their warm-up. A football match to play, but a worthy cause to support. Help for Heroes, a charity close to one player's heart. Yeah, there's a lot of footballers who do care, obviously. A lot of them are still anonymous with charities and that who don't want to be known. I was fed up, like, obviously, reading the papers about like, kind of Peter Andre and Katie about their marriage. And these guys are fighting over in Afghanistan and Iraq, getting limbs blown off and not even making the paper for the courage they do for the country. Peter's pledged £5 every time he or one of his teammates scores. Jermaine East has cost him £65 so far, money he's happy to give. Before kick-off, a moment of ceremony and solemnity. The match ball marched to the centre before the signal for the off. The MK Dons defence let their guard down after just 30 seconds, but they were soon level. Sam Baldock on the charge. Another fiver met with Peter's seal of approval. Sean McDonald's put Yeovil back in front. Again, the Dons' defence went AWOL, not what they'd come to see. During the break, a parade. Fans showed their appreciation for the guests of honour. It meant a lot. A little bit choked up. You know, you know because, uh, I'm an old man now, but do what we can. Do what we can. Midway through the second half, a foul on Aaron Wilbraham, penalty. Peter Leven had to take it. He wasn't going to miss. That goal was for, I'm just going to deny that to every soldier in the country, home or away, in Afghanistan, Iraq, whatever they may be, that goal was for them. I think it's really good that everybody should realise what the armed forces are doing for us and our freedom in this country, and it should be noted. Well, I think it's absolutely the right thing to support the forces right now. I'm a big fan of what Peter Levin has done. A point for the Dons, thanks to Peter, a yet more important one made for our heroes. Tom Williams, BBC Look East, Milton Keynes. And just a reminder, we show all of the goals from our games in our bulletin on Sunday tea time. You can also see all the goals now on the BBC website, including this one from Grant Holt for Norwich City against Oldham. He's now scored 19 goals this season, more than anybody else in the league. <laughs> Fine celebration. <laughs> Now, it's been a big day for the BBC in Cambridge. We've moved into a new building, specially designed to serve our audience in places like Luton, Milton Keynes, Northampton and Peterborough even better. You might have noticed we've got a new look here as well. Starting ten days ago, our team has completely ripped out the old set and brought us up to date with a new look. And we've put a special time-lapse camera up to record the changes. <laughs> They move very fast, don't they? They do, don't they? Our <laughs> boys are just the best workers you can imagine. <laughs> so that's here. Now, Joel Mapp and what's been happening in Cambridge. You are listening to BBC Radio Cambridgeshire. This is the home of local live sport. Same radio station, but a new home. BBC Cambridge has moved to a new £9 million building. The lease on the old one had run out. Bye then, here we go. Coming to TXB. It's next. also now home to Lucise Cambridge Bulletins. When someone says this... After more news, where you live. Lucise splits in two. While Stuart and Susie introduce more stories from Norfolk, Suffolk and Essex, Amanda in Cambridge presents reports from the West, places like Northamptonshire and Bedfordshire. Thanks to all this new technology, that bulletin will look and feel much more like the national news. And there are no camera operators in this studio. It's all done at the touch of a button. The technology also means that for the first time, Lucky's can take reports from both Northampton and Luton simultaneously, improving its coverage of those areas. And gadgets like this green screen will improve the look of the 8 o'clock bulletin and help us cover stories in a more creative way. Is this good value for money? Well, what viewers tell us is they want more local news about where they live, they want that with the BBC trustworthy and reliable values, and they want us to deliver value for money for licence fee payers, and we believe we can do all of those things from here. The most important change is that for the first time, Cambridge's TV, radio and online operations are all under one roof. And that means the editors all sit together at this desk, sharing resources. So today, Sally Chitzoy was asked to cover a story for TV, radio and the Cambridgeshire website. It's all live from today. A new start for an old friend. Joel Mapp, BBC Lake East, Cambridge.
I like it when Joel does something like that. I now understand. Yes, it. now we know how it works here. Uh, and Julie's got a new spot as well. I we? have. I can almost touch you. <laughs> Susie, thank you very much. Well, we'll start with some pictures of grey skies over the River Waveney near Bungie. It has been a rather grey afternoon and for some of us a fairly wet one too. And I'll show you why. If we look at the radar sequence, you can see we've had this area of rain pushing in from the southwest. Some of that has been on the heavy side but already it is starting to clear the southwest. And that process will continue over the next few hours. So probably the last of that rain clearing that northeastern corner by about 9 or 10 o'clock this evening. And then it becomes largely dry, quite a lot of cloud, but hopefully some clear spells and just a few showers, mainly in the north. Uh, temperatures tonight, uh, lows of 3 or 4 degrees Celsius. But I think we should just about stay frost-free. The reason why, well, those winds will ease to a moderate to fresh southwesterly once the rain has gone, but they will still be strong enough to prevent a ground frost in most places. We may just see a touch of ground frost in more sheltered spots. So tomorrow, one front clears away to the northeast, and then we've got this one pushing in from the southwest during the day, but it'll probably not turn up until quite late on. So for most of us during daylight hours, once we've lost the last of those showers in the north, it'll be fine and dry with some spells of sunshine. But the southwest will probably lose the sunshine during the afternoon as thicker cloud spreads in, and this rain is likely to arrive by about 4 or 5 o'clock in the evening and then spread to all parts during tomorrow evening. Temperatures tomorrow, well, about 8 Celsius for many. That's 46 degrees Fahrenheit, a little bit above normal. And the winds are light to moderate southwesterly, so not quite as blustery as today. So this is your five-day forecast. As I said, I think for most of us, daylight hours will stay dry tomorrow with that rain pushing in from the southwest late on. Wednesday, Thursday and Friday should be dry for everybody. But these days producing variable amounts of sunshine, probably the Friday, the, the cloudiest of the days. And by then, temperatures close to 7 Celsius by day, which is near normal for the time of year. And Saturday at the moment may be dry, but it's looking misty, foggy, murky. Not great. Quite seasonal in feel, though. And uh, as we start to get chillier by day, Day, we get those light winds and I think we become much colder by night, Thursday night through to Saturday night, anything between 1 and 3 Celsius. And with those light winds, I do think we'll see the return of frost, both ground and air frost. That's your forecast. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, Jules. That's it from all of us here. Thanks for your company. It feels very strange. See you tomorrow night. <laughs> Good night. Goodbye. <laughs>